Hi there, it's Nicole for Lawn Fawn, and today I have a card with the new Upon a Star stamps and coordinating dies. This is part of the summer 2017 release. More fantastic stamp sets and dies from Lawn Fawn. I just can't say enough great things about this new release. This is a set that's so super fun as it looks like the little critters are looking up into the sky. In this instance, they're gonna be looking at some constellations, but if you wanted to use the fireworks dies, it could be a 4th of July or other kind of celebration card really easily. Now here I'm just showing that I used the new outside in stitched rectangles, which might be my most used new basic die from the collection to create some of my shaker card components. One piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock was used to create the frame and two dies were used. And the back of the scene, these are the two pieces I'm gonna show here. The large die was used to create the backer for the shaker because this is a little bit smaller than A2 sized and to cut the transparency for the window. And then I die cut another large rectangle with that outside in stitched rectangle and die cut a simple grassy hillside from that for the grass that the critters are sitting on. I've put both the frame and the inside panel in my Misty, and I'm holding them down with some magnets and then laying out the constellations to really fill that night sky. Now, some of them are going out into the frame of the shaker, and this is the thing that I really wanted to talk about today, is to make the shaker frame part of the scene. This is one of my favorite things to do so that instead of maybe seeming so framed up, it makes that shaker frame part of the design of the card. I'm gonna use my anti-static powder tool and then stamp the constellations with some Versamark ink. There will be a couple places that really need to be filled in, that upper left corner for sure, but I used about everything from the stamp set here. Go ahead and sprinkle on some white embossing powder. Once I've done that, I can take individual images then. I'm just gonna pull them off of my Misty and fill in a couple of little areas so that the night sky is nice and full and that way I can do a little embossed resist. This kind of helps make the shaker aspect of a card seem a little bit more, not quite so framed up, I guess. It has to be framed up simply because of the nature of a shaker card, but I love the look of making the card more cohesive. There's those couple more images I stamped to fill in, make sure everything's covered really good with that white embossing powder. It's so hard to see when you're using white on white, but for embossed resist, it's my absolute favorite. Go ahead and heat this up with my heat tool. You can kind of see that powder start to melt. There's not a lot on the frame, but just enough to really help make that whole design transition nicely from the background to the frame. Now before I start adding any ink to anything here, I am gonna go ahead and take my simple grassy hillside die cut, and this is gonna go along the front of the frame. Another favorite thing to do when creating shaker cards is to not only build maybe everything inside the shaker, but I'm really drawn to creating or adhering things on the outside of the shaker as well. So in this instance, the constellations are gonna be inside the shaker. They're outside on the frame as well, but they're inside the shaker and everything else is going to be on the outside. So this is the simple grassy border, again, using the powder anti-cling tool and stamping greetings from the Upon a Star stamp set. Now what I particularly love about this stamp set is that it has so many great greetings you can mix and match, but the word star doesn't have an S on it you can add the S for certain phrases, which I think is fantastic. It just makes it so much more useful. Lawn Fine is really great about creating greetings that can mix and match for whatever occasion you want them for. So here I'll just go ahead and sprinkle on that white embossing powder for the S, and so it reads, reach for the stars. 
I think this could be a fantastic card for graduation, maybe especially if you wanted to add some little graduation caps to the little critters. I think that would be super cute. Um, all kinds of different occasions that this particular card would be fantastic for. And you could switch up the greeting to be for whatever you wanted it to be. Next, I'm gonna take four colors of Distress Ink and pounce them on kind of in circles. I've got Wilted Violet, Peacock Feathers, chipped sapphire and black soot. And it looks really messy when I first start doing this, but as I pounce on all of these colors, I want there to be some nice color all over the background. Then I can go back and kind of blend with my lighter colors and blend those colors together. Then I'll take water from a distress sprayer and spritz it over the background. And once I do that and kind of blot those areas dry and blend it out and wipe the ink from on top of the embossed areas, the inks blend together really nicely for a beautiful kind of galaxy type background. So there's my ink. I'm gonna spritz on some water. The Distress Sprayer is fantastic for those bigger droplets of water. Gives you a nice, all kinds of different sizes. Buff that off. And some of the, those spots kind of buffed out too much, I think, when I buff the ink off of the embossed area. So I'm gonna spritz it again. Go ahead and blot that dry again as well. And there is my Galaxy background. So super fun. I think those constellations are just adorable and fantastic for all kinds of cards. Next, I'm gonna take some Shabby Shutters and Mowed Lawn Distress inks and apply them to the grassy border. This is gonna go on the outside of the shaker along the bottom edge of the scene. I'm gonna start with Shabby Shutters. Then I'll take my Mowed Lawn and blend that in. I need a scrap piece of paper so I don't get my fingers into that ink. Now on this, I am not gonna spritz this with water from a Distress Sprayer. And because of that, and because I'm using Bristol Smooth cardstock, the ink is gonna stay kind of wet for a little while. And it's really hard to touch the, those kind of panels if the ink's still wet. So I did hit that with my heat tool and dried the ink so that I could easily pick it up, move it around, and use it. I've stamped the images from the Upon a Star stamp set, both foxes and both bunnies. I'm coloring in the foxes with some shades of brown, E09, 13, 15, and then E50 for the tips of the tail. Just really cute images, adding some little dot detail after I have all the shading done. I think I need to darken those tips of the tail with just a little of the E13 blended into E50. The bunnies are all gonna be colored in shades of warm gray with warm gray 00, 246, and then R20 for the noses. Most of the lighter warm gray colors get really blended out. The two I definitely use a lot, but the 00 got blended out quite a bit. I darkened the bunnies too much or more whatever the case, whatever you want to say, but I did use the warm gray 00 for the bunny tails. And then warm gray two, I'm going to dot the um, tails over warm gray 00 just to give them a little bit of texture. I want them to still kind of look white, but this way it gives them a little bit of texture. Blend out those grays until I get a nice seamless blend. Add some little dot detail again to these critters. Gives them some nice texture and added interest. The, the pink adds some nice little color to the noses. There's the little bunny tails. And then I'll die cut them with the coordinating upon a star dies. There are constellation dies for all the constellations as well. I think it would be really cute to maybe even have some of the constellations sit on the top of the shaker on the shaker transparency if you wanted to add even more dimension and layers to your design. 
Now this particular transparency does have some film on it, so I need to make sure I remove that. And then I'm gonna flip my frame over and put a nice strong adhesive on the back of this and add my transparency to it. For whatever reason, a lot of times I forget that if my inside frame fits inside the frame shape, I really need to add it before I do the transparency because you want it to line up perfectly. Um, I didn't, so I'm gonna show you a little trick to help get that lined up perfectly here in a second. I took the grass and put it across the front of the shaker and then I'm just adding all of my little critters here sitting along the front. Again, using a good strong adhesive to hold them all in place exactly. Adding some black glaze pin to the eyes on the bunny since you can see those and I think that helps make them pop. So here's where I really needed to have done this step first. So I could have used my frame as a guide. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it behind here, take a little post-it tape and hold it in place. I tried to use just one piece of post-it tape, but two is gonna work better, especially because this post-it tape is well-loved. I've used it several times, so it kept falling off because it's not as sticky as it once was. So I'm gonna try again. Get that lined up perfectly back behind the window. I'm gonna flip it over. And I need to grab another piece of post-it tape to really hold that in place because this is just not sticky enough. But this will work great if I go ahead and use two pieces. So I went ahead and laid it flat. I was trying to avoid two because I think the black glaze pen wasn't quite dry on the bunny's eyes, but it is now, since I've messed around with this for so long. Go ahead and line that up with the shaker backer, and then just pull out those two pieces of post-it tape, and the background is lined up perfectly. So there's a little tip if you're like me and you forget to line that up before you go ahead and get that transparency on the back of the shaker frame. I'm always so excited to get to this part to watch the shaker be assembled and to see how fantastic it is with that interactive element that sometimes I forget. Now I'm gonna double up my foam tape here and it's slightly too wide for my shaker frame, which is okay, I'll just simply cut it in half. This also makes the foam tape go a little further and frame up my shaker frame. I'm gonna go around all four sides and make sure the foam adhesive butts up right next to each other to hold in the shaker material Plus, you can see along the bottom edge of the shaker frame, a lot of that is covered up with the grassy hillside and the critters. If I leave the foam adhesive like it is now, just framing up this shaker frame, a lot of the material is gonna be hidden and fall back behind all of that solid stuff. I'm gonna have to either use quite a bit more shaker material so it's visible, or you can take some additional foam tape, which is what I'm gonna do here in a second, and put another layer along the bottom so that the shaker material doesn't fall all the way to the bottom edge of the card. Simply doubling up another big piece, and that's gonna help it not fall so far down. I'm gonna take a powder tool and go around the edges of the foam to help keep the sequins and confetti from sticking. I've got some pretty pink posh silver mini star confetti, some sparkling clear stars, and shimmer seed beads. Remove the backing paper from the foam adhesive and take the shaker back to that and press it in place real good. Flip it over and shake it up and you can see that there is a awesome starry sky with lots of sparkle and shine. Now one of my favorite stamp sets from the new release, which is gonna be kind of funny probably, but it's the Push Here stamp set. If you've been wanting a stamp set that has slide me, push me, push here, pull, whatever, this is a stamp set for you. I have been wanting one of these forever because I think they're fantastic for interactive cards and Lawn Fine has just outdone themselves with this. It's fantastic. 
I stamped this Shake Me circle and greeting here, added a little chipped sapphire distress ink, and then I just trimmed a little off the top, and I'm gonna adhere this right under the top edge of the shaker. And this is just a great little note to the recipient to let them know that this is an interactive card and all they have to do is shake it up. I think that's really fun, so super clever, and just a fantastic way to let the recipient of interactive cards know what to do with those awesome designs that you're sending them in the mail. I'm gonna put a little adhesive now on my side fold card base and take my card to that. And it's slightly smaller than A2 size, so it's framed up nicely. Thanks for joining me today for this shaker card featuring the Lawn Fawn Upon a Star stamps and coordinating dies. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Lawn Fawn that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.